Hello everyone! So a couple of weeks ago I put out a video highlighting what I think are the major factors holding back DCS World War II and what I think can be done about it. And that video did very, very well compared to most videos on the channel and had a lot of discourse in the case of a huge number of comments that were posted. More comments than I've ever had on a video before. And some were agreeing, some were disagreeing, some were vehemently disagreeing. But one thing that did crop up is the idea of putting in more variants of existing aircraft. And I thought that was a really good idea, so I just wanted to talk about it today. So we do already have some variants in some of the aircraft. For example, the Spitfire does come in the clipped wing and non-clipped wing variety. Few varieties of the P-47. But on the whole, we are quite limited in what we have. Now compare this to something like IL-2. And yes, I'm going to make that comparison because IL-2 is kind of dominating the World War II multiplayer space right now. And one of the sources of IL-2's sheer number of aircraft is the fact that they have a lot of varieties of the same general airframe. They've got a staggering variety of 109s, for example, going from the 109E all the way up to the 109K, with many sub-variants of each version. And I think this is something that could really help the DCS World War II space grow and have a lot more variety with a relatively small investment in time. So we know that the issue with the lack of variety in the World War II planes is simply how long it takes to develop a full fidelity aircraft. And yeah, just to clarify something that didn't seem overly clear in the last video with some of the comments, full fidelity does not mean a clickable cockpit. Full fidelity refers to the level of modelling detail that goes into the actual aircraft, modelling everything from the individual systems to the airflow over the wings. DCS aircraft don't have preset maximum speeds. That is all calculated on the fly by running a simulation. This is what gives us this really, really realistic model that we love in DCS but it comes at the cost of having a lot of man hours involved. And I totally get people saying that they don't want to see any non-full fidelity modules in DCS. That's what makes DCS stand out. So fair enough, if we don't want to put in mid-fidelity modules, then instead building and expanding upon the existing full fidelity modules might be the way to go. And certainly building a full fidelity module from scratch is a huge amount of work, but we have seen several times already that it is much less work to adapt an existing full fidelity module into a similar related variant. As I said, we've already seen some examples in the World War II space. We've got a few varieties of the P-47 all released at the same time. And although those varieties are very, very much similar to each other, we do have more extreme versions in DCS. You need to look no further than the Mirage F1, which has recently had its twin cockpit trainer version announced. And that is a significant departure from the original. This is a different shape to the external airframe. This is a very, very different cockpit that they've put in, a different handling characteristics, different avionic systems and of course different coding to make sure that it is compatible with multi-crew support. And all of that was delivered to the module while it is still in early access, clearly taking much, much less time than the couple of years that it takes for a full fidelity module to be made from the ground up. Now the reason I think this would apply really, really well to the World War II space is because in World War II there were many planes that saw service throughout the entirety of the war with different variants. Classic example there is the 109, served throughout the war but with several updates taking it through. Right now in DCS we just have the 109K, which is fair enough, that was the fancy latest one that came out the end of the war, but we don't have access to any of the others. And I think it would be really, really good to see some of the others, see maybe one of the G variants, or maybe two of the G variants, the most mass-produced version of the 109. Take it back a bit further to the 109F, 
and you've got a really nice, very maneuverable version of the aircraft. Both of those would fit really well in a Eastern Front style campaign, whether that is in multiplayer or single player. And we can even push it even further back. If we get the E variant, then we have access to the Battle of Britain era. We already have the maps for that. The existing Channel and Normandy maps would work absolutely fine. They both cover the southern coast of England, and so would absolutely suit a Battle of Britain style map. And we already have one of the versions of the Spitfire, so again, if we have multiple previous versions of the Spitfire, that would allow us to push the maps back. And this not only gives us access to new eras, in this case Battle of Britain, which would be really, really fun to play in this high-fidelity DCS, but it would also give existing missions and campaigns a, a bit more of a variety. Could, for example, have the 109Ks edged off as a special limited availability aircraft but with the 109Gs much more common or maybe in preferable starting positions closer to the front, giving players interesting choice, and then on top of that, making dogfights a lot more interesting. When you see a 109, you don't just immediately know that's a 109K, I know exactly how that is going to behave. There is a lot of variation between the 109K, the 109G, the 109F, and certainly the 109E. Now, I think the 109 and the Spitfire are the absolute best to focus on with this, since they do have multiple versions, both served throughout the length of the Second World War. But we can certainly think of others that would really, really fit quite well. So we already have the 190D and the 190A8. I think it'd be really interesting to get earlier versions of the 190A, particularly the A3. Again, that would be a really nice fit for the Eastern Front style maps. For the American planes, both the P-51 and the P-47 could have their Razorback alternatives put in. Again, these give different flight characteristics, different handling characteristics, and push the planes into a slightly further back era so we can get more variety there. All in all, I think that this would be a way for Eagle Dynamics to put out quite a few more airframes, really spice up the World War II space, while keeping it full fidelity, which a lot of people really care about, and all with putting in much less man-hours than developing new modules from the ground up. Now one thing that did come up when I was thinking this over with myself is, well, what price point should these be at? Because certainly I don't think Eagle Dynamics would ever put in this amount of effort and have it free for people who know who have the existing aircraft. Equally, it's probably going to be a bit of a push to ask someone who already has the 109K to fork out an additional $60 for the 109G. Certainly a lot of people will, but it may be a bit, bit much. I know for myself I've got the 190D and I'm very hesitant to get the 190A8 just because it is quite similar. But again I think here we can look to the rest of ED's catalogue to see how they've handled this before and we can look at what they've done with the A10 and the KA50. Both of these have seen updates with the newer versions being significantly discounted for people who own the previous versions, or being available at full price for people who have not bought into them yet. And I think this would be a really, really good fit. For example, releasing the 109E, but having it at 50% off for people who already own the 109K. I would certainly pay for a half price module to get the 109E, absolutely get that on day one. Probably do the same for the 109F. I'm not a big fan of the 109G, but that's a personal preference. And again, same thing for, say, a Spitfire Mark 1. Absolutely, I would pay half price for that, no problem at all, grab that on day one. Meanwhile, people who are coming in and don't own the 109K, they might not be interested in that. They might just want to get into this new Battle of Britain era that I am proposing here. Well, they can then just pay the full price, buy the 109E straight off and just ignore the 109K altogether. Giving people choice, giving Eagle Dynamics or whoever develops the modules the money back 
to support continuing making more of these variant modules. So all in all, I think this would be a win. I think this would give us greater variety. This would still keep everything full fidelity. This would flesh out the eras, give new options to both multiplayer and single player spaces. And it seems a win for Eagle Dynamics. They would get money for developing modules that they've already got a lot of work in. And even for people who aren't interested in buying any of these subvariant modules, they still get the fun of flying up against these. Variety in DCS is not just about what you personally fly, but it's what you come up against. So yeah, those are just my thoughts. Uh, last time had a huge amount of comments in, so by all means let me know what you think down below. Do you agree with this? Do you think this is a terrible idea? Do you think I need to stop making these opinion videos? Let me know down below, and otherwise I hope you all have a really good day, and I hope to catch you in a future video. Until then, be kind to yourselves and everyone else. Cheers.